Today's latest controversy, press the number one for yes, press the number two for no. We'll bring you the results later on in the show. Joining me now is former governor Tim Kaine, chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Governor, good to have you with us tonight. Ed, great to be back. Is, uh, is Michael Steele good or bad for the Democrats? Well, you know what? I'll tell you this. I think he's a fair representative of what the other party has to offer right now. Let me just state it that way. And Ed, you've stated it uh, correctly at the top. They've only had one agenda, and that's to beat President Obama. Michael Steele wrote a book earlier this year. The subtitle of the book was uh, 12 Ways to Stop the Obama Agenda. Just think about it for a minute. This is the party of Abraham Lincoln. If he thought that his party had devolved to the point where their only platform was how can we help President Obama fail, he would turn over in his grave. That's so, what this grand party has become. The only thing that unifies these guys when they're not fighting between the Tea Party and the institutional parties such as they exist is a desire to stop President Obama when we all need to be working together to turn this nation around. Thank goodness the economy is turned around and growing again. We got a long way to go, but these guys are just standing on the sidelines, throwing rocks, and they're showing the American people how they yeah. would govern if they happen to uh, get back in power in one or both houses. Uh, G Governor Kane, I've been out on the road. I've talked to a lot of people, done a lot of town halls. If the economy is getting better, I have to say that a lot of Americans don't feel it. They don't sense it. Everybody, Not enough yet. Everybody's mm -hmm. mad at everybody. I mean, there, there's just so much cross chatter going on amongst the parties. How do the Democrats turn that around, maintain the uh, majority, and mm -hmm. maybe even pick up some seats? I mean, what's the game plan this summer? Well, sure. Well, Ed, let me say this. It is clearly the case that the economy isn't where it needs to be yet. But I know an awful lot of road contractors who have people at work who weren't working a year and a half ago because the stimulus investments. Um, uh, consumer spending is starting to pick back up again. The GDP is growing, not shrinking. We're adding jobs every month, not losing jobs to the tune of 750,000 jobs a month in the private sector, as was happening when President Obama came into office. So part of our job, I think we have to do this as Democrats, is tell people, look, we're not where we want to be yet, but at least things are getting better. And the last yeah. thing we need to do is put it in the hands of the guys who will take us right back do in you, the ditch. Do you think Americans believe that things are getting better? Do you I, sense that? I, I, I detect it in different groups of people when I talk to it. They recognize where, you know, the economy isn't, uh, isn't uh, in a free fall. The economy is growing. Jobs are being added. The stock market isn't at 6,000. In the last year of the Bush administration, $10 trillion of savings were wiped out when the stock market went into free fall. Look, we're not out of the woods, but yeah. things are climbing again. We got to make that case. But we yeah. also have to point out that ultimately, Ed, and this is what we do for November, we make it, it's a choice. It's a choice between a party that is doing the heavy lifting to solve health care, to regulate Wall Street, to guarantee that women are entitled to equal pay for equal work, or low-income kids are entitled to health insurance versus a party whose only goal and, is to fight but, for Wall Street and fight against uh, an economic turnaround. But but don't you have some sense that maybe the Republicans and all this obstruction has frustrated the country so much that people are thinking that the Democrats get anything done? I don't take issue with what you said. You're exactly right. right. A lot of good stuff has worked. But also their strategy to a, to a sense has been somewhat mm -hmm. successful. Would you agree with that? Uh, I, I do think that they have pursued a strategy that's just as you describe. And, and they, they basically decided, look, if we can fight President Obama on everything, and not just on policy, yeah. when he wants to speak to school children on the opening day of class, we'll fight against him on that, even though other presidents have been extended of that courtesy. We'll, we'll put in bills suggesting that he wasn't a U.S. citizen, which members of Congress, Republican well, members have done. just focus the country. That's really uh, what they've been trying to do all along. Yeah, distract people. Yeah. That might lower turnout. It might increase anger. But here's because, what they're finding, Ed. They're also reaping the whirlwind because some of the anger that they're creating is coming back and knocking off yeah. a, a multi-term senator like Bob Bennett or chasing a Charlie Crist out of the Republican Party, an Arlen Specter out of the Republican Party. When you preach a politics that's about who are we mad at and who are we afraid of, you you often yeah. find that it comes back and bites you too, and that's what they're finding. Governor Kane, good to have you with us tonight. Thanks, Thanks so a lot, much. Ed. For you, more, bet. you bet. For more, let's bring in Roy Seekoff, founding editor of the Huffington Post. Roy, uh, if the Democrats are going to get this momentum, this